Hey guys, my name's Justin and welcome to Healthboro, where we care about the design behind designer luxury. And if you care too, make sure you subscribe right here. Yeah, okay, I think I got it that time. All right, <laughs> for today's video, I thought it would be really fun. I thought it would be really entertaining and really educational to do a little bit of a deep dive on this guy, the Balenciaga Gucci Yaga uh, hourglass in the uh, Gigi screen canvas. Oh yeah, so I know I called it a deep dive. I don't know if that's like what I'm gonna name it. So if it has a different title, that's, that's what it is. <laughs> All right, so for this bag, I actually already did a review on it that I'll link up in the corner, but that is more like, is this a good bag to use? Like, just talking about the bag as a bag, um, and like, if it's the right bag for you. Kind of help you make a decision if you wanted to look for it or something like that. But what I wanted to talk about today is a little bit more looking into the design, the material, a little bit of the history, and just kind of like, you know, go into the micro, like the micro, 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 so that I could... I don't know. Talk about it. Because <laughs> who, do, who doesn't love overanalyzing something to the point that you hate it? Wait, no. Not me. Okay, let's dive on in. Alright, so let's start by talking about the shape of the hourglass bag. I'm gonna actually start off pretty easy <laughs> with this first thing for me. So, of course, when you look at an hourglass bag, it has this curvature built in. Obviously, when you look at the shape and you turn it sideways, you kind of start to see like that hourglass silhouette. And of course that is, I think, the base of the name for this bag, right? This bag shape, which keep in mind, is only, I think like a few years old. It came out in 2019 um, and it came out in the extra small, small and the medium. But the inspiration, according to the internet, is that Demna looked to uh, Cristobal Balenciaga's Basque waistcoats from the 1950s. Okay, here's the thing. I couldn't find any like hard visual references of that or any specific references to something being called a Basque waistcoat. I am aware that Basque is a region of Spain, but you know, I, I would like to think that like there would be some sort of like acknowledgement of what it is or how it looks. So for me, moreover, I kind of think it's actually a reference to just the, the very uh, iconic like hourglass shaped jackets that Cristobal Balenciaga did way back when. And then Demna loves playing with that silhouette nowadays um, and really like exaggerated it and made it, I think he kind of made it his own. So like for me, that's where I think the whole idea of this like bag shape came from. And I mean, I totally get it. Like you can totally see like, oh yeah, hourglass silhouette. And the fun thing too is like Demna also has like some like clothing. Like I know he has like a skirt that actually has this kind of like hem and he calls it the hourglass skirt. I think there's also hourglass jackets and whatever nowadays too. I mean, I, I, could, I talk about the design in the review, so go watch that. But I do, I do still like, you can't shut me up from talking about like the structural and how like when you have it on a flat surface you are the bag is lifted i mean since it is such a recent bag shape it's still i think we're all here kind of waiting to see if it's gonna withstand the test of time i find that normally when you have these like it bags that kind of like explode in popularity they often like are gone within the next like two years but it seems like this is still ongoing which is weird because trend cycles are now shortening and now like turnover of different styles and looks is changing and we're starting to look at micro trends and... Okay, that's a whole other topic. One that I do not know about. <laughs> I mean, celebrities, influencers, everyone like loves this bag and has this bag and multiples of this bag, so... Or at least like, you know, the hourglass shape. I do think that structural bags are going to stay strong. We've already seen a couple of structural bags that are like pretty popular, like the Prada Clio. I mean, even looking at like some of what Balenciaga has done, like sure they don't look structural, but they, a lot of their bags are structural. 
I don't know. I guess it's just the, the test of time. We'll see what happens. So that was talking about the shape. So I do think that there is like a little bit of an interesting history to it. But I also think that the history of the GG Supreme canvas. Yeah, I think it gets interesting. So what is coated canvas? I'm sure most people have at least some sort of awareness of what coated canvas is. A lot of huge luxury brands use this as a material like Louis Vuitton, Gucci. I don't know, you, you name a brand, 50-50 chance at least that they're gonna have some sort of like coated canvas, you know? But the thing that's interesting for me is that a lot of people think that coated canvas is like some sort of leather. I don't know why. It doesn't feel like leather and it doesn't like have that like leathery smell. I don't know why I did that for smell, like, oh. But it is actually going to be a canvas, typically cotton, and then it's coated in PVC, polyvinyl chloride, which is plastic. But that means that it is a sturdy material because you have that stiff canvas and then you have the plastic coating, which also makes it very durable and water resistant, I would like to say. So really, it is a fantastic material. Now, when we're talking about the actual like look of it, one thing that I did not realize, and I felt very stupid, <laughs> so I'm telling you so you don't have to feel stupid, is that this is not the original Gucci monogram. The original Gucci print, like all over print for the cotton canvas, was something called the Diamante. So take a look at it and then breathe out and we're like, thank God we moved past that. Like, I understand it's important for the house because it was the first pattern on like coated canvas, but like, it's not my favorite. So the Diamante pattern came first, and then it was actually in 1953 that Guccio Gucci, yes, that is the founder's name. By the way, if you didn't know that, it's Guccio Gucci. Guccio Gucci. Eh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that also blew my mind. But he had recently just opened his first US flagship store and it was just like a short time after. I think it's a couple of like weeks actually that he actually passed away. And then to honor his father, the son created this GG monogram. And that's where this actual print comes from. I actually really do love the GG monogram. I like the kind of taupe that they use and then this like cool tone type of brown to make the GG and the little squares that make up the monogram. It's definitely one of my favorite monograms, especially compared to like Louis Vuitton. Uh. Just because like, I like this color scheme better. It's like a nice cool color. But I also love that like when you look at the actual monogram, it's not just like, here's the letters, but they actually were able to like flip it and make it like GG because it's Gucci o Gucci. So it's not just like, Oh, they put Gucci twice. No, it's the guy's name. And then they like flipped it. I don't know, I think it's really kind of like good luck and also like really hilarious that the name worked out that way. <laughs> it's a beautiful name. If your name is Gucci o Gucci, it's beautiful, be grateful. Also, you're probably like related, so yeah. <laughs> you're not watching this. So that's like a little bit of a brief history about the Gucci monogram on the coated canvas. So we have the Balenciaga hourglass shape and then we have the GG Supreme canvas and then now we're gonna talk about how it came together. Let me get comfortable. So the thing for me about the runway show where the hacker project came to be is probably one of my favorite presentations not just from Gucci but from any fashion house, I think. There's of course like some Karl Lagerfeld ones which are like way over the top and definitely beat it, but like this one was amazing. So the Aria runway happened in fall winter 2021, which means it happened in the summer? That sounds right. I don't remember. Time isn't real anyways, right? <laughs> the way that it opened up and it was the idea of like entering the speakeasy, like in like some dirty alley and then opening up and it's just this like surreal hallway of like flashing camera lights. Like, okay, first of all, flashing light warning for anyone with epilepsy, but it is so incredible that they just put this many like cameras, fake or real, whatever, but they had that many flashes. Creating a tunnel out of that and creating this like sensory overload 
and it almost became this kind of like step and repeat feel, right? Where it's like all the celebrities go and they see a million camera flashes while they pose. But then seeing that runway, and then especially because it's tied to the Gucci centennial, like 2021 was the year that Gucci hit 100 years old, right? So they wanted to make something crazy. Like the whole soundtrack was like all Gucci songs. It was very like the whole like Gucciification of like... <laughs> Sounds so wrong, but I also love that phrase. But like the Gucciification of like their runway, right? And like the thing for me that really like got me was taking their like alleged, supposed, whatever, like equestrian roots and like amplifying it and adding it into the fashion in a way that reads as like SM bondage kinds of things. I think there was even like a model walked out with a whip and like hit the whip on the floor. And I was like, okay. <laughs> It was cool, I really liked it actually. So then all of that happened, and then out of nowhere, for me at least, this like really insane like statement piece, it read like Gucci, Balenciaga, and having that come out on the runway, I was like, oh, okay, okay. This is like a real thing that's happening. Like they've actually managed to make it happen. I mean, it happened because they're both under caring. Like that's like the umbrella company, kind of like how Louis Vuitton is under Louis Vuitton Moe Hennessy but Gucci and Balenciaga are both under caring. But the fact that they did this hacker project where like, if you look on the Balenciaga side, which I didn't think was like as exciting, but they used the Gucci shapes there with like a fake Balenciaga monogram, which is fine. But then on the Gucci side, they used shapes from Demna's recent collections from I think even like 2016 to like current and they like Gucci-fied it. I know it's not a real word. I know, I know they don't say it, but I like saying it. <laughs> Anyways, I think it was also like the first time I had seen like two large fashion houses do a collaboration in this way. Like of course we've seen High Low with H&M and whatever luxury fashion brand and Off-White Nike, like there's a bit of contrast so that's how it made sense. But then to see two fashion houses going at it like that was phenomenal. For me, like this bag, it represents like a moment of pop culture like we've even seen like sarah jessica parker in the sex in the city reboot she had like the small version of this the viral hype i think was so interesting that like even once like any sort of like memories of this are long gone i'm still gonna love this bag because it is so ridiculous and it seems so impossible like this does not look like a real bag this one is but like it's just ridiculous like it's uh, very clearly it's a Balenciaga shape, but then with very clearly it's the Gucci monogram. Like, come on. It's definitely like one of my favorite bags to own because I feel like I'm owning a piece of fashion history with it. A giant fashion house that has an it bag in this shape collaborated with another fashion house that has a giant like store of products using this monogram and they just like mashed it together. I don't know, it's insane. That's what makes this bag a standout in my collection. That definitely means that I'm going to hold on to this bag for quite some time. So that's it for the deep dive. I hope you found this interesting and I hope you got something out of it because I, I do love looking at like unique bags and kind of picking them apart and seeing like all the different like parts and pieces. But that's all I have for you today. If you like this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. It lets me know that you like this kind of content and that you too care about the design behind Designer Luxury. Until next time. Whoa, she's so crazy. Uh.